number 97. Let's stand and sing. There's a song in the air. 97. Well, good morning, and so glad to see all of you here. As we, this is our last Sunday morning service before uh, we celebrate Christmas, and and I hope that everyone is ready. That's ready or not, here it comes. And uh, sometimes we get very busy this time of year. But you know, one thing we don't want to do is forget the meaning of Christmas and, and what it's all about. And, uh, it's about the birth of our Savior, and He came so that He might die, and He went to that old rugged cross so you and I could have a home in heaven. So uh, we're very thankful for all that uh, God has done for us and all He continues to do for us. Um, I have a few announcements I'm going to let you know about, and then uh, something else I'm going to do here in just a moment before we sing. Uh, the announcements I wanted to let you know about the Christmas cards, uh, a couple things about the Christmas cards. One, if everybody before you leave, if you would check uh, the mailbox over there, they try to get these things organized, but uh, let me just say, if you grab the cards, like say, my last name is Bonnell, so I grab out the A and B's out of the mailbox, go through every card and make sure you check to see if you've gotten all your cards. Because uh, what happens every year, I mean, people did a lot of work, you know, put time in to put these cards together. Uh, every year, we usually have a few bundles or there's some cards left over, uh, and we don't send those out to anybody. We don't mail them uh, to anybody. So, a couple things I would suggest to you. One, make sure you get your cards, and whether you think you've got a card or not, uh, you know, you may want to check just to make sure. I know... Cards were a little different this year because you know, some people were coming, some people aren't. Some people had mailed cards out. Uh, and that was another thing. If you put cards in there and you haven't seen these individuals for a while and you think they are coming to the 9 o'clock service, don't assume they're coming to the 9 o'clock service. You may be, since this is Sunday, the last Sunday before Christmas, you may be better off just taking that card if you put it in there. And uh, so you might want to double check that uh, if you stuck cards in there. Uh, you might want to pull those cards out and just mail them this week. Uh, otherwise, those individuals will not get them. So, because we don't mail anything out. I don't deliver them. Uh, now, if I happen to be getting mine out and I see somebody's there that I'm getting ready to go visit, I'll take them that way. But uh, I already 
uh, have gotten in a lot of my visits here this past week and the week before. Um, so anyway, I'm not planning to do that. I will be going to a few places this week, but uh, not that many. So please go through your cards make sure that those are taken care of. Uh, also, uh, on the tree up here, uh, we have a, a new tree this year. <laughs> uh, we have it over here in this building instead of over in the other building. We put the decorations on that tree, and then last week I forgot to announce it. Uh, so I don't think anybody from this service was able to get the decorations off the tree. The decorations have uh, little food items. Uh, you can bring those in. Uh, if you get those decorations and you bring the food items in, just try to have them in if you would by no later than Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to leave through the day since I'll be around. Uh, probably the side buildings open, uh, the side door so we can see uh, who's going in and who's going out. Um, but if you have refrigerated items, please make sure it gets in one of our refrigerators. Uh, and, uh, but if you can get that in by Tuesday, I'll deliver this stuff Wednesday. We just want to try to be a blessing uh, to a few families uh, here at Christmas time. And, uh, and I appreciate you all uh, taking part in that. And so anyway, the decorations up here, they're little, I don't know if you've seen them or not, they're little toilet paper uh, rolls for 2020. That's the way this year's been. You know, of all things that we ran out this year, who would have ever thought we'd run out of toilet paper? I mean, it's just been that type of year. It's been a crazy, crazy year. And not only once, but twice, you know, we ran out. And so I don't know what people were thinking. you think they'd hoarded up enough from the first time around, they'd have been okay, but I guess not. Um, so anyway, we have uh, the decorations up here. And then uh, I'm going to honor uh, here in a few moments uh, some of our workers that have been in charge of different ministries. And so I'll mention that here in a minute. Um, <clears throat> but we are still selling uh, the Pastor Pirate CDs. Uh, we'll be doing this for a while. I'm probably going to get uh, some more of those uh, once the young people, I know you probably have given some of these, we'll give them as gifts. Uh, but once they start listening to these, uh, I'll probably get a few more uh, just to try to make them available to you. And again, it'll be just for whatever cost uh, we get them for. But right now, they're $13 each. Uh, if you get three or more, they'll be $10. We'll give you a little bit of break on that. Um, I think we have probably 12, 13, 14 left uh, if you'd like to get those. Um, and let's see here. There is a church directory available. Uh, and I think, I think we brought that over. It's on the table over here. Now, let me say this about the church directory. In the back of the directory, uh, what I did is I copied and pasted a lot of names of people that uh, this was actually about three weeks ago I did this. People who haven't been here for several services. It might have been a couple of months. Uh, it might be because you know, they're just you know, waiting on a doctor's appointment so they don't want to get COVID so the appointment doesn't have to be rescheduled and so they haven't been here for a while. Uh, or maybe they haven't been here since all this started back in you know, March. Uh, but anyway, those names in the back of the uh, directory if you all could help out with this, and I know sometimes you say, well, I don't know who these people are. I don't know who. Well, that's how you get to know people is you say, hi, this is, tell them who you are. And, uh, you know, we're from the Catholic Baptist Church. And, you know, we just want to try to touch base with people and let you know, you know, we've been thinking about you. And you, if you call them before Christmas, say, we wish, want to wish you a Merry Christmas. If you call them before New Year's, we want to wish you a Happy New Year. Uh, if you call them in January or February, you know, uh, so we want to let you know we're thinking about you and, and uh, and then sometimes you conversations get going. Sometimes they get talkative because they haven't talked to anybody. I mean, some of these people, I've heard a few of them tell me they feel like they're in jail because uh, you know, they just haven't seen anybody for so long. So anyway, we want to touch base with these folks. We want to uh, make sure that we don't have anybody falling through the cracks. And if everybody will pick at least one name or even two names a week to call, you think of how many people we can call in a week's time. And we can keep up with these people. And just call different ones each week. Uh, and it will help out tremendously. Uh, you do not know how much of a blessing it will be to them just for you to have a, you know, a few minute conversation with them. And everybody can be involved in this. Teenagers can be involved in it. Uh, older people can be involved in it. And uh, so anyway, just I want to make that available to you and try to challenge you to do that. I know we had a few folks that's done it, and uh, you don't know how much it has brightened these people's days because they've already told me said oh I heard from so and so and, and uh, they were just thrilled to death and so anyway I want to challenge all of you to do that and if you're like me if you're not in the habit of doing it you'll probably think about it, think oh yeah that's a good idea I like to do that 
And then you'll forget about it until I mention it again next Sunday. You're like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. So you might have to hear it a few times before you actually do it. And uh, so anyway, I just want to encourage you to do that because it will be a blessing to you, but it's also going to be a blessing to them. Um, and then today, uh, a couple things that we're doing. Uh, the Christmas play is today. So it's at 630. We did not have uh, the play practice on Wednesday. And I've heard from a few of the young people, they were a little nervous because they didn't have that extra practice. So what we're going to do for those that can, we're going to have a very brief practice uh, right after the morning service. For those that want to stay, now if, if the kids aren't able to stay or don't want to stay, they think like, okay, I've got this, don't need to, uh, that's fine. We're just going to go mainly through uh, a little bit of the dialogue, but the placement, where they're going to be here, where they're going to be there, uh, just to try to touch base with that. So um, I think a few of them would feel a little more comfortable uh, getting that out of the way, and hopefully... Uh, they sweated enough the last couple of days that they looked at their play a little bit and reviewed some of these things. So anyway, we're going to do that uh, today right after the morning service. And then uh, tonight, uh, the young people that are the, some of the main characters, they're dressing up as an older person in the play. They need to be here at 530. Uh, the rest of the cast uh, and all of the younger people, the little kids, need to be here by 6. Uh, so if the parents can help us out with that, we are going to spread uh, the chairs out a little bit, and we're also going, we plan to live stream uh, the play. Uh, I don't know how well the sound will pick up because it's going to be off of my phone, uh, but hopefully you'll be able to pick it up pretty well. Mike has done an excellent job with the sound, uh, tweaking it. We have a couple other wires hooked up there that's really picked up the sound great. And uh, so anyway... <clears throat> Um, that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to spread these out a little bit. So if you can't come, you don't feel safe coming, we're going to try to social distance as much as we can. But you can still at least watch it online. I think we have some folks that are looking forward to seeing it, but they didn't want to come. Uh, and I don't want to uh, rob them of blessing because the kids do a fabulous job. A fabulous job. Um, so I appreciate them doing that. And then uh, our New Year's Eve service, and game night will be uh, not, now this coming Wednesday we'll have our candlelight service. That'll be at 7.30 in here. And we don't have as many Christmas lights in here. We just have the Christmas tree. Uh, so the stage will probably be down by that time. And we'll just maybe turn the lights on in the kitchen, open the kitchen doors to give us a little bit extra light in here. But we will have the candles. We'll do, uh, if you've not been to our candlelight service, what we do is we sing through uh, people just pick a favorite hymn out of the hymn book, a favorite Christmas carol, and uh, we sing, I forget, a verse or two of it, and uh, and we just do that until nobody wants to pick anymore, and then uh, I'll bring you know, just a short challenge from God's Word. Uh, we'll probably, unless the singing goes longer, we're probably not going to be here until 830, um, probably be here maybe 8 or 815, depending on how long the singing is, but uh, anyway, that'll be our service this Wednesday night, and then... The following Wednesday, we will not have church uh, on the 30th. So we will have church on Thursday that week. That's our New Year's Eve service, and that will be our game night. Uh, that will start at 7 o'clock. Now, I haven't heard from anybody, any of the young men or any of the older men, who would like to bring a challenge from God's Word, uh, 5 minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, well, hopefully if we have a lot signed up, then 5 minutes would be good. And... Uh, I've, we have one special, uh, somebody's singing a special, we have that uh, signed up. So if you're wanting to play an instrumental, uh, you're wanting to you have a part in that, this is just a time for you to have fun. You, sometimes you get all nervous and scared about it and you think, man, I can never do that. Well, this is a good time for people to practice and all of us need to learn, uh, you know, especially these young men uh, and even some of the older men, we need to learn to be able to teach other people. Um, some of God's words. So it might just be a special verse that God has blessed you with, and it might take you 30 seconds to get through it. That's okay. Uh, it doesn't have to be some long, drawn-out thing. So anyway, just want to encourage you to let me know uh, about that, and that way I can put you down. And otherwise, we're going to have a really, really short service on Thursday. <laughs> and, uh, and then that, after that, we'll have uh, probably some soup and sandwiches, and we probably need to get a piece of paper over there. I didn't think of that either. There's just a lot of things going on this time of year. Uh, but we need to get a, a sign-up sheet maybe for some soup and sandwiches. Or if some of you ladies say, okay, yeah, I can do, you know, 
two dozen, I, I remember how we do it, two dozen sandwiches, is that what it was? You all, anybody remember? Okay, nobody remembers, so uh, we'll just get some food here, <laughs> and we'll eat, how about that? And, uh, and then if you have any leftover Christmas snacks, you want to bring those, we will, you know, we can eat those, but we're just going to have a time, a game night, uh, you know, for those that want to stick around and do that. Uh, each year, we usually stay around here for a few hours and, and just enjoy ourselves play some different games. Um, and let's see here, I was trying to think. Uh, don't forget January services. January services, the evening services, we have five services in January. The evening services are going to be moved to 2 o'clock. So we will have our morning service here at 11. Then we'll, if everybody can pitch in, we'll set some tables and chairs up. The food tables will probably already be set up and we'll have the food there and our stomachs you know, will be growling all through the morning service. And, uh, but then after we eat and fellowship, uh, you know, we might even start a little bit before two, uh, you know, once we're done with the fellowship, but we'll get ready for the service again and we'll have our two o'clock evening service. And uh, we'll see how that goes this year since we'll be in this building the whole time. Usually we were in the other building and we would just go back over there for the service, and a lot of people have enjoyed that, so we've done it uh, the month of January the last couple of years. And I think that is, uh, it's all the announcements, I think. If I think of anything else, I'll let you know, but if you could, please try to remember the Christmas cards, because I just hate, I hate to see people go through all that time and expense filling out Christmas cards, and then they don't ever get picked up, uh, you know, because somebody forgot the check, or, or maybe you didn't think you got any. And they're over there. So please, if you would, help us out and make sure you get those. They've tried to organize them and group them together as much as they could, but uh, there might be some that's not that way. All right, um, before we have another song, um, I'd like to uh, recognize some of our workers. Um, now, I think it's a good idea to, the Bible says, give honor to whom honors do. And, uh, and I think it's a good idea to do that. We ought to be in a habit of doing that in our families, uh, you know, even in our places of work. Uh, we ought to give honor to one another. The Bible says, in honor, preferring one another. So it's always honor, honor, honor. And, uh, and so we're blessed to have a lot of workers uh, in the church to make things happen around here. It's a lot. And God's blessed us with some tremendous property buildings and all that stuff and it takes a lot for the upkeep and little things that need done uh, to make our services flow uh, and uh, so anyway I just appreciate these folks and I try not to leave anybody out because um, I appreciate what everybody does but these are just people who are in charge of different ministries um, so I try to recognize them here and this is just a small token of our appreciation this is not something uh, obviously outlandish I would love to be able to do more but this is just a small token of their service to the Lord, a little what we appreciate them for. Um, so anyway, uh, I've given some of these out already uh, in the nine o'clock service uh, because they weren't going to be here in this service. So we have two deacons that are in uh, the nine o'clock service and we have two in this service. And so I would like to uh, recognize them and I've got something here for them from the church. And then also, uh, the people I call, if you would, there's a gift up here you can also get, and I will tell you, um, I don't know how long this cord is here, and I feel like I'm on the prices right now, <laughs> but these, this gift right here, that's one gift, those two containers, uh, there are two different kinds of cookies, and of course those two containers go together. Now everything else is individual, uh, this is some type of snowman candle uh, right there, and these, in this box here, these two boxes, uh, it's, a, it's a, one of those large candles also. It's a pretty, pretty nice candle. Sometimes females don't like all the desserts, but uh, I like the desserts, so that's why I pick mostly of that stuff out. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we have some coffee mugs or eggnog mugs, whatever you use it for. And uh, they've got some goodies in there, but uh, I think there's three of those left. And, but you can come up and pick one up, and, uh, and then we'll... Uh, give everybody a round of applause whenever we get done. So anyway, uh, our two deacons that are in this service, uh, we have Jared Sowers and Jody Lee. So if you all would, you can come up and get something or maybe pick something out for your wife. So God bless you. Thank you. Whoops, did I give you? Yeah, okay, I got some bright cards. Yeah. 
All right, and let's see here. Uh, for uh, now, Jody's he does a lot of things. He's also our team leader and does a lot of things with teenagers. This has been a little bit of a different year uh, with that, but I appreciate uh, what he and Beth do, and and I appreciate all the help they get too. Uh, but they're very instrumental when it comes time to cold wars and getting stuff set up, and uh, just a lot of things throughout the year. So. Uh, Jody, this is also for you, so we're going to fatten you up. And, uh, that's a gift card there to Chili's. And you can get, if you want, something for Beth down there. She did already pick one thing out because she's in her children's church. <clears throat> but, uh, and Beth, of course, she picked something out. She's in our children's church uh, leader, and I appreciate uh, all the stuff she does. And Dave Ballinger had mentioned in the Sunday school time, you know, these gift baskets we did Saturday, uh, and I, you know, again, appreciate everybody who helped deliver those, but, uh, you know, best one of those individuals that you just say, you do this, you do this, I mean, she just snapped to, she can make those quick decisions, and, and, you know, people need that, people don't realize the weight of one decision, you know, uh, one person can't make all these decisions, it's just too much, and uh, so sometimes it's helpful when people just come along and say, hey, you know, okay, I've got this, you take care of that, you take care of that, and they just pitch in and start delegating things, and that makes things go a whole lot smoother. But I appreciate all the work she does there with our children's church. And, and uh, you know, they did a great job there a few weeks ago. They did that sign language uh, thing. I tell you what, it's a, it's a blessing seeing these young young kids and what all they can do. And I'm glad for our uh, adult workers and Sunday school teachers that work with them. Now, also, we have, uh, we have a couple individuals that set up buildings and decorations and cleaning. Now, I know some people may not want to come up here. I didn't think about that. Uh, they may not want to come up in front of everybody to get these, so you can get it afterwards if you'd like to. That's up to you, but you'll get what's left over uh, if you do that. Uh, but anyway, we have two individuals, uh, Julie, uh, Julie Bragg, she helps set up the buildings uh, and decorations. Uh, she cleans the church. Uh, and does a lot of things there, and I think she's in junior church this morning, children's church this morning. Uh, but anyway, she'll come over and get something if she hasn't already. And then also Beverly Scott, she does a lot uh, helping out clean this building up. This is a big building to clean, and uh, so I appreciate her doing that. I don't see her this morning anywhere. Um, but anyway, I appreciate them, and they can get one of these maybe later on uh, today. Also, we have for our Sunday school department, uh, we have our Sunday school superintendent. This is Byron Hurley, and he told me he wasn't going to be here for Sunday school. I don't know if he's in. I don't see him in the morning service here. So, um, but anyway, I appreciate uh, Byron. Do you want to get something for Byron? For Byron, <laughs> you want to get something, Trina? Or you want to get? You wait. Okay. And uh, and then uh, also our Sunday school secretary Brenda Gillespie. She was here this morning and got something. Uh, our Sunday school superintendent assistant, which is Doug Mullins, and uh, if he's uh, here sometime, he can get something. We might have, I think we'll have a few of these extra here. And then church clerk, uh, Volley Penn, she was here this morning. And then uh, also, uh, this individual, appreciate uh, him very much, and uh, he doesn't like to be recognized a whole lot, but he's kind of our jack of all jobs around here. Uh, this is Rodney. Rodney's been a huge blessing uh, <clears throat> to me, and... and you know, I don't tell everybody this. I've told him this, uh, but a couple years ago, I mean, you, you don't realize how much it is to keep do the upkeep on the buildings. I mean, there's maintenance. There's other things that's got to get done. I mean, it's a lot of property, the mowing, uh, and just the headache of thinking about it all the time. And a few years ago, I was thinking, I said, Lord, you say in your word that we need to pray for laborers. And that was specifically the labor I was praying for. I said, we need some laborers that's going to help take care of this place. <laughs> Because we have people that would love to do it, but they're just busy. They're busy. They've got families. They've got jobs. And it's like, we need somebody who can, who, who can help with this. And then uh, it wasn't long after that, Rodney had called the church in the fall. And uh, long story short, he came, got saved, got baptized, joined the church, and has been a blessing. He says, you know, what can I do to help out? And started giving them little things to do. And they seem like little things to some people. But even, you know, the little things like unlocking the church, turning the lights on, getting the heat set up. I mean, that's, that was all stuff I was doing. Preacher John was doing it before me. 
But that's stuff I don't need to be doing. I don't need to be thinking about all that. And uh, that was such a blessing, him coming along and just, you know, whatever you need done, I'll do it. And he's been just that type of worker, and I appreciate that. And I'm glad we have people like that because he's not the only one, but he's been a huge help around here uh, getting the stage set up. Anything we need done, I know I can depend on calling Rodney and say, hey, can you help us out? And he's here in a heartbeat. So, Rodney, come on up. Now that I've embarrassed you to death, and, <laughs> <laughs> and just something there, it's a blessing there from our church, and if you want to pick something out up there, I'll say. Okay, all right, thank you. And if you would, uh, please don't put up your chairs today and leave them there, because that will make it a lot easier. He's going to help us get set up for tonight, so, <laughs> and uh, anyway, I appreciate uh, all that Rodney does around here. Um, and then uh, also heading up our bus ministry and helping out with that, we've, uh, they've kind of taken over. We've had a few individuals working on this before, but uh, I appreciate uh, Craig and Hope. They have been driving uh, this for a while, and they've been bringing uh, some kids in with it. And, and uh, so I'm going to ask them if they would come on up, and both of you can pick something out uh, if you would. <laughs> it's like, you picked this out for me. <laughs> But anyway, I appreciate them, and, and uh, they have been a true blessing. And as he's getting a couple things there, uh, let's see. Also taking care of our financial records, and uh, she's also assistant to our bookkeeper, Sharon Smith. Uh, Andrea has been a huge help, uh, helping take care of our records in the church, counting the offering. Um, and, you know, since she's done it, we haven't had any errors, uh, and you don't know... Our, you know, we are to be good stewards of God's money that comes into this church. So whenever offerings and stuff come in and they get counted here, they need to be counted to the penny. And then it gets counted again uh, when it goes to our bookkeeper. And it's got to match up to the penny just for accountability purposes. And then when it goes to the bank, it's got to again be counted to the penny. It all needs to add up all the way through. Uh, if you have a, a off five cents here or 15 cents there, you've got some problems. And so we can't have that because we need to be good stewards of God's money. And since Andrew's been helping out with this, uh, I really, really appreciate that because it saved me from having to talk to Sharon every week and try to figure out where the money went to and what's going on here and, and trying to go back through our paper records and, and track everything down. So anyway, uh, Andrew, if you would come up and she's actually been helping Sharon out and I appreciate her doing that. And uh, she's working there with our records and stuff a little bit. And then uh, also, and she's getting something picked out there. Appreciate it, Andrew. And uh, our head usher, Harry, he's, he's uh, Harry Greco. He's important as far as getting, uh, making sure. Of course, we haven't done offering quite the same way. <laughs> uh, I don't know that we're ever going to get back to the offering plates. Uh, we've had the offering box now for a long time. And we may eventually get back to that, but Harry has been very important as far as uh, getting our counts for our services. Uh, he tries to make sure that's taken care of for every service, uh, making sure the offering and stuff's taken care of as well. So Harry, if you would, uh, why don't you come up and get something, or if you want to get it later, okay. Uh, and then also, uh, don't, yep, there she is. I want to give something also for Tammy. Tammy has been a blessing. Now, I would give something to Miss Laura. Miss Laura's not here, and I appreciate Miss Laura playing the piano for us. For uh, we haven't had the choir for a while, but she has done that. She's played it for specials and everything. But since Miss Laura has been hurt, uh, Tammy just jumped right in, and she's played the piano for us, and I think's done a great job. Uh, it's not sometimes people make things look easy. Well, until you've played a musical instrument, you realize it's not quite that easy. It takes a lot of practice, <laughs> and uh, but I appreciate Tammy doing that. And she's just pretty much, you know, been willing to do uh, whatever we've asked her to do as far as that goes. And, and uh, now she gets a little break because Elizabeth's in. So uh, she's taking a little break today for at least maybe a week or two. But anyway, Tim, if you would come on up and get something there. And again, I appreciate everything that she's done for us. Watch that board there, too. Oh, uh, she's got to put up with me, too. So <laughs> let's give them all a round of applause, please. Again, all of you know, we have many other folks who have you know done things here in the church, and I don't want anybody to feel left out. Uh, 
you know, these are the ones who are kind of in charge of different ministries, and I just really appreciate them. And, and some ministries we've had people in charge of, uh, we've had to change a few things because of this virus, and uh, so they're not doing what they were doing before, but hopefully we can get back uh, to some type of normalcy. But anyway, we're going to have another congregation here, and then uh, I've got uh, a challenge here from God's Word for you as we get into the Christmas season. So Jody, if you would. Turn number 85, let's stand and sing, Silent Night, 85. Take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 9. Isaiah, chapter number 9. This is part of what we would call uh, the Christmas story, but it's the Christmas story of the Old Testament. And we're just going to look at one verse here. And this verse, I think, is a, a very key verse that has to do with uh, the names of our Savior and the vision that Isaiah had from the Holy Spirit of God and, and uh, what he saw several centuries before uh, it ever came about. So Isaiah chapter 9 and verse number 6. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Well, let's pray. Father, we ask, Lord, that you will be with us now as we look here to scriptures, and I pray that you will give me, Lord, the words you want me to say. And uh, Lord, I pray that you might work in our hearts and lives uh, here today as well. Lord, there might be one uh, watching or one here in the service, Lord, that does not know Christ as their Savior. Lord, I pray that you very lovingly draw them to yourself, help them to see their need and the desperate need that they have. 
Lord, we don't know how much time we have here on this earth. But Lord, we don't have forever to make decisions for you. So help us, Lord, to be obedient to that. I pray that they might get saved today. But Lord, I pray for those of us who are Christians, Lord. Lord, there may be other things going on in our lives that only you know about. And, and I pray that you will just help us, Lord, to see Christ today. Help us to see his magnificence and, and these names that we're going to look at here in a few moments. And uh, Lord, I just pray that we might be encouraged and challenged. And uh, Lord, I just pray you might be exalted today. And as we get into the Christmas season, Lord, and, and we get ready to celebrate your birth, Lord, I pray you help us not to get so busy that we just get sidetracked and we forget the main thing. And that is Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that you will bless us now and, and open our hearts and understanding. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, here in verse number six, you know, some people, we're going to look at these names here in just a few moments. Some people would say that uh, there are four names, and they would say Wonderful Counselor is one name. Uh, but I think they're missing a lot here because these names actually mean something completely different. Uh, they're different in a lot of ways, but I believe there are five names. I believe one name is Wonderful, another one's Counselor, and then the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. But before we look at those, I want you to we'll talk here just a minute about uh, the vision that Isaiah had. He noticed in the start of the verse here, he says, For unto us a child is born. The first thing Isaiah saw here was the crib. He said, unto us a child is born. You know, this was God's purpose since the fall of man. Shortly after the creation, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, God had already, in his foreknowledge, had devised a plan how all this was going to take place. Isaiah prophesies of the birth of our Savior several hundred years before it ever happens. And he says, for unto us a child is born. That child being born was for all mankind. And then it goes on here, Isaiah not only saw the crib, but he saw the cross. Notice the second thing that he saw. He says, unto us a son is given. Now this is the son of God. And he gave himself for us. John 3, 16 tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What greater gift could you possibly have than the Lord Jesus Christ? God giving the most precious thing he had to the world. And so he had given his only begotten son. And Isaiah further describes that gift when he describes the suffering of this same child, describes the suffering he's going to go through one day when he describes it in Isaiah chapter 53. He talks about how he was bruised for our iniquities. He was wounded for our transgressions. You know, all of those things that Christ went through for you and for me. So Isaiah saw the crib, he saw the cross, and then he saw the crown. You know, one day Christ is going to reign and be king of kings and lord of lords. But I want you to understand, he is still reigning today. He is still king today. Even though he is not on his earthly throne, he is still king of kings and lord of lords. It says here, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And so this is talking about uh, God's activity in our world today. The Bible tells us that he's the one who sets kings up. And he's the one that puts kings down. But you know, he is going to rule and reign on this earth for a thousand years. This is after the time of the tribulation. And uh, you know the amazing thing about the tribulation, we think 2020 was bad. <laughs> That's like a Sunday school picnic compared to what the tribulation time is going to be like. And it's going to be massive chaos. And uh, you know, where they this virus that went across the world, they were projecting... Uh, you know, with this virus, at the initially, 3 to 8% of the population would die from this. That's nothing compared to what's going to happen in the tribulation time. The Bible makes it clear in Revelation, half of the world's population will be killed because of the plagues that God's going to bring upon this earth. Thankfully, we're not going to be here. <laughs> we don't have to go through that. Now, we may have to go through the times that lead up to that time, but we're not going to be here for that seven-year period of God's wrath, but after that time, Christ is going to come back. We're coming back with him in the clouds. He's going to set foot here on this earth, and he's going to set up his millennial kingdom for a thousand years, and you and I that are saved are going to rule and reign with him for those thousand years. But you know the amazing thing that I think about those thousand years? 
with Christ ruling on this earth. He's the one that's in charge. At the end of that thousand years, there will still be some that will reject him. To me, that's absolutely mind-boggling. How could somebody's heart be so dark and so hard? But yet that's going to happen. But you see, when Isaiah saw the crown here, he said, he shall, the government shall be upon his shoulder. It's going to all happen. It's all going to be fulfilled. You can mark it down. Then he leads us in here to these names. And we're going to look at these names. Let's first of all look, pick the first one here, Wonderful. His name shall be called Wonderful. Now, this talks of his magnificence. You know, when I think about our God, and I think about how wonderful God is, and I think about just everything that God does, you know, I think about some of the characteristics of God. You know, God is what we would say omnipresent. Uh, I think uh, Dave Ballard, you mentioned that last week in Sunday school, about God being omnipresent. All that word means, the word omni means all or everything. You know, and uh, he is everywhere present at the same time. Now that to me is fascinating that all of us in this room, and not just in this room, but across this planet, every single individual can stop what they're doing, say a prayer to God, and God hears us all at the same time, and he wants to take time for us, and he cares about us. You know, if that was you or I, we would be up there like, what am I going to do? You know, and we'd be flustered and frustrated trying to get this taken care of and that prayer answered. And this, it's no sweat to God. Why? Because he's omnipresent. But also he's omnipotent. That means he's all powerful. He's able to take care of all those things at one time. There's nothing that is too strong for him. As a matter of fact, when I think about omnipotent, that will get into the other name here, the mighty God, in just a minute. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But he's not only uh, omnipresent and omnipotent, he is omniscient. That means he's all-knowing. Every secret thought we have, God knows about. Now, we, we can sometimes fool one another. And we can sometimes fool ourselves. But you're never going to fool God. Because he knows the hearts and minds of all mankind. And God is omniscient. He knows what we're going to do before we even do it. Because he knows not only everything that's ever happened in eternity in the past... But in his foreknowledge, and this is why his name is called Wonderful, he knows everything that's going to happen in the future. To me, that's absolutely amazing. Now, that does not eliminate yours and mine, uh, our decision-making process. Some people say, well, God knows I wasn't going to do that, so it's no big deal to him. Uh-uh. God still gives us a free will to choose. We have to choose to follow him, choose to do right, or choose not to do right. We still have to make a choice. The only thing is... We don't know what the choice is going to be until we're confronted with it, but God already knows what the choice is going to be. That's why he's called wonderful. He's an amazing God. But also, when we think about that word wonderful, I think about God as the creator. You know, you think about all these things that we see, how God created. Science, sometimes you hear people talk about science. Now, I love science. Science is great. Uh, but let me tell you this. Science is not always correct. The world wants you to think science is always correct. Science has been wrong oodles and oodles and oodles of times. And they're still wrong about things today. And they say, well, the science backs it up. Well, did the science back it up whenever they bled George Washington to death? Well, it did it today. At that time, the science backed it up. But they killed the guy. Today, we know differently. But you know, God had it figured out all along. It says the life of the flesh is in the blood. Without that blood, you're not going to live. <laughs> just plain and simple. Well, they tried to bleed the guy to death, and they did. They've done it to many people. There's still science things that are done today. We don't have it all figured out. And don't think they have even things with this virus all figured out and, and all this other stuff. We just, we're, we are not infinite like God is. We are not omniscient like God is. We are not omnipotent like God is. We have to depend on a God like that. Why? Because he's wonderful. And we think about this creation all around us. You know, the human eyeball is so complex that it is more complex than all of the electrical components that went in to when they made the space shuttle. Our human eyeball is more complex than that. And they want us to believe that this stuff just happened by accident. 
I don't think so. Why? Because our God is wonderful. We think about him as being creator. You know, I like what it says there in, uh, you know, the Bible tells us in John 1 verse 3 that it says, All things were made by him, speaking of Jesus Christ, and without him was not anything made that was made. He is the creator. And then back in Genesis chapter 1 verse 16, as it's talking about God being the creator and how he makes, uh, he made the sun. Now, the sun, that would be a massive project to make that. God just spoke it into existence, and there it was. And the thing's still burning today. Hasn't moved anywhere. It's still there. Some people say, oh, the sun's losing power. It's losing Nothing's going to happen to the sun until God says, I'm burning up everything. I'm going to create a new heaven and a new earth. God spoke it into existence through his power. And I like what it says. He made the sun. He made the moon. And then as you get to the end of that verse in verse 16 of Genesis 1, it says this. And he made the stars also. Kind of like it was an afterthought. <laughs> you know, oh, oh, by the way, I think I'll just make these stars too. Now, until you realize how many stars there are. There are seven and a half billion people on this planet today. Every person, and this is just the stars we know about. Every person can own two trillion of them. I can't even fathom what a trillion is. And God just says, and he made the stars also. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because he's wonderful. And you know what the amazing thing is, as we think about this name, wonderful. I want you to realize these names, as we go through them, there's a progression of these names that we're going to see. It starts off with the name wonderful because in Romans chapter 1, it says that we have in verse number, uh, Romans 1 verses 19 through 20, it talks about all of the things that we have. Are clearly seen, e even his eternal power and Godhead, so that, and it talks about this, that every man is going to be without excuse before God. No one is going to be able to say, well, I didn't know there was a God. Because these things are clearly seen by this wonderful creation he has given to us. The thing is, people have rejected God's magnificence. And they try to attribute it to all kinds of ridiculous type of things. And they try to say science backs it up. Psalm 97 verse 6 says, The heavens declare his righteousness, and all people shall see his glory. You see, that's wonderful. God's magnificence, his wonderful attributes are made known to every individual. There will be nobody who can say, when they stand before God one day, they can deny it to you and I. But when they stand before him, they're not going to be able to say, well, I didn't know. They've got it all around them. Even people who are blind have the magnificence of their own body and life itself. That is the wonderful God we have. But then look at the next name here. The next name is Counselor. Now, the word Counselor here has to do with advising. Or it also means this. It means to guide to something. That's what counselor means. Now we know he's wonderful, but he is also counselor. In Psalm 16, 7, it says, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. Now in the New Testament, the Bible tells us that God, uh, not only is Jesus Christ known as counselor, but he has given the Holy Ghost to us. And he is also our counselor because he guides and leads us into all truth. Now we know as God has revealed himself to all of mankind so that every man is without excuse, what is God's next plan? His next plan is that all men might be guided to himself to be saved. He wants all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So God in his counsel and foreknowledge and under the convicting power of the Holy Spirit of God, he is going to guide us all to himself and we're going to be confronted with making the decision. Are we going to accept the truth or are we going to reject the truth? That's because he is not only wonderful, but he is counselor. Now, once we accept the truth, I like what it says in Romans chapter 3 and verse 18. Let me flip over there and read this to you. Romans 3 verse 18, if you want to turn there too, you can. But this is the passage of scripture that was given to the church of Laodicea. This is the last of the seven churches. And God didn't have a whole lot of good things to say about this church. But I want you to see something very important here. 
I believe these people here were saved, but God is dealing with his church very lovingly and very patiently because he is counselor. After he has rebuked them and he says, basically, you're not cold, you're not hot, you make me sick. And he says it very plainly in verse 15, 16, and 17. Look at verse 18. Here's his counsel. Even to his people who have gone astray. He says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. You know why those verses are possible? It's because he is our counselor. Counselor. He is counseling us to do these things. Even the church there, that wicked church in Laodicea, he is counseling them to just return back to him. So God is our, he is wonderful. We all are going to know him as being wonderful. And we all are going to know him as counselor. But what happens with this third name? Remember I said that these names are kind of a progression as you go through them. Every human being ever living is going to know him as wonderful. And every man is going to be without excuse because they see the magnificence of his creation. And God, through the Holy Spirit, is drawing all men to himself. He wants all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. The Bible tells us that he is not slack concerning his promise. Uh, he's not willing that any should perish. You know, God wants every person alive to be saved. That's because he's counselor. He's guiding us to himself through the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. But now we're confronted with a decision. Are we going to accept it or not? Notice his third name. It's the mighty God. For those who reject Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, this is the last name they're going to know is the mighty God. Because that word mighty has to do with, it means basically a warrior. He is mighty as a warrior. The Bible tells us that God is angry with the wicked every day. When God created, uh, when he created hell and the lake of fire, he did not do it for you and for me. You see, mankind had not fallen into sin yet. But he did it for the devil and his angels so that they would be punished forever and ever. And that's why the Bible says you and I are made a little better than the angels. And here's why. When we sin, we have a chance to repent and turn around and ask God to forgive us. The angels don't. One third of the angels fell in the rebellion with Lucifer. And they'll never have a chance to turn that around and make that right. Because God had created them special. He had created them with all the power and majesty of all the angels, the seraphims and cherubims. He created them with all that. And when they rebelled against his authority, that was their last opportunity. And God and his mighty warrior like God, they cannot fight against him. They have no power over him. I mean, they cannot stand the blood of Jesus Christ. They cannot stand anything to do with his power because they know that their time is coming. Their time is short. And they're going to be suffering for all eternity. So they try to cause as much havoc on this earth with mankind as possible. But you know, when mankind fell into sin... That mighty God who is fighting against wickedness all the time has to also judge mankind. And people who reject the truth of the gospel are going to know the mighty wrath of God. Sad to say. There was a man by the name of Jonathan Edwards who preached a message a couple hundred years ago here in America. This man, from what I understand from, from this message that he had preached, this man was not a great preacher. Matter of fact, he spoke in a monotone voice. It was kind of like, as I would read, let me read the Bible to you here from Isaiah 9. I'm going to read it in a monotone voice so you know what that is. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. The everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. No fluctuation in his voice whatsoever. 
Nothing there. And matter of fact, I understand that he read this message. He didn't preach it. He didn't get up and pound the pulpit and yell and scream and get into his message. He just read the message in a monotone voice to the people. And the Holy Spirit of God showed up. And the people at that time fell under such conviction. People were gripping the pews. They were gripping the chairs in front of them. Some people were hanging onto the poles around them. And they were screaming because they were afraid the earth was going to open up and swallow them whole and send them to the pits of hell. And matter of fact, this, the title of this message was called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. He was preaching from a passage in the book of Hebrews. And all he did was read that message. And when the Holy Spirit of God showed up, those people saw the mighty God. And many of them made decisions to trust Christ as their Savior because of that. But people today who reject the gospel, that's the last name they're going to know is the mighty God as they stand at the great white throne judgment. And they are cast into the lake of fire that burns with fire and brimstone, which the Bible says is the second death. That's the bad news. Let me tell you the good news. The good news is this. For those of us who are saved and who God brings to himself through his, his name counselor, he's guiding us to himself, and we realize he is the Savior and we need to be saved and we ask him to save us, and we become, as it says there in John chapter 3, we become born again. We get now become a part of his family. We know him as the mighty God because now... He is fighting as the warrior on our behalf. He is fighting against all of the wickedness that's around us. He is fighting uh, to protect us. He is doing all these wonderful things for us. Why? Because he's the mighty God. I like what David did when David uh, saw the armies of the Philistines there. And David was just a 17-year-old boy. And uh, he, I mean, he's a, a ruddy youth, just a little guy. And this giant Goliath, nine feet uh, six inches tall at a minimum. He could have been taller than that. But at a minimum, nine feet, six inches tall. And he's coming out and he's threatening the armies of Israel. And every man is afraid to go do battle with this guy, Goliath. And finally, David just says, is there not a cause? How dare this guy speak about my God like this? How dare he speak about God's people like this? And David goes out there and he started to put on some armor. And he says, well, I can't put on this armor. I haven't proved them. I'm just going to take what I know. He grabs five smooth stones in his slingshot. That's it. Smart, five smooth stones in his slingshot. And the Bible says as they go out there, he makes his way towards Goliath. Goliath starts mopping. They start doing some trash talking. And then David starts trash talking back to him and tells him what he's going to do. And I like what the Bible says. The Bible says that David hasted to the enemy. He hasted. He ran like a wild man. I can just picture David. Ah! He's slinging that stone. Hits Goliath right smack in the head. He falls flat on his face. I think God just was kind of like guiding. And boom! Slams Goliath down. David climbs on top of him. Pulls out his sword. Cuts off his head. And you know what David said? He said, the battle is the Lord's. That's the mighty God. He is fighting on our behalf. You and God make a majority in any situation. It doesn't matter if this whole world is against you. You and God are a majority. That's the way it works. He's the mighty God. But notice also, as we continue on here, it says that he's not only the mighty God, but he's the everlasting Father. Now remember, these names are a progression. It starts off as wonderful. Everybody knows him as wonderful because every man is going to be without excuse. God in his love and mercy is drawing all men unto himself. He is guiding us to himself so that we are confronted with making a decision to receive or reject the gospel. Then we make that decision. Now, everyone is going to know him as the mighty God, whether you're saved or lost. If you're lost, you're only going to know him as the mighty God as your judge. But if you're saved, you're only going to know him as the mighty God as your protector. But now also we know him as a Christian we know him as the everlasting father. Now he's not just any father, but he's the everlasting father. Once we get saved, we're adopted into God's family. We become his child. He is not just our father when we do well, but he's our father all the time. And I always picture God the father as 
just like the prodigal son's father. When the prodigal son left, notice the father never left home. It was the prodigal son who left. He went into a far country. But when he came to himself, he went back to his father. And guess what his father was doing? Months had gone by. Maybe even years. The Bible says that the father, he had been watching for his son. And when he saw him afar off, he saw him a long way off. He had been watching for him all that time. Just waiting for him to come back. You see, that is our everlasting father. If you are out of God's will here this morning and you have been disobeying Him and you are in sin, I'm going to tell you, you have an everlasting Father if you are saved. If you're not, you need to get saved. And then you will have an everlasting Father because you will be adopted into His family. And He's just waiting for you to return home. He'll kill the fatted calf. He'll celebrate your homecoming. That's because He's our Father. But it goes much deeper than that as we think about our everlasting Father. Romans 8 and verse 15 says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now to most of us, that doesn't mean anything. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. It doesn't mean anything until you understand what that word Abba means. That word Abba some people said it means dear father. Some people, and I think really what it literally means, it means father, father. It actually means father. But it's not just I fathered this child. It's kind of like when you, you have a daddy. Somebody you love, somebody you respect. I think about Nehemiah, I'm going to tell a story on him. He's a, he's a lovable guy. And this is what I think about when I think of Abba, Father. I come back in from being over to church, and I've been working for a while, and, or maybe I've been out visiting or something, and I come home, and, and I'll be talking to Becky and Nehemiah, and he'll come up, he'll climb up on the couch, on the armor couch, and he'll throw his arms around my neck. He gets on my back, and he's wanting to piggyback ride, and sometimes he just wants me to pick him up. He'll come up to me and just do this and want me to pick him up and hold him, and he'll just hug me and put his head on my shoulder, and he'll kiss my cheek. I'll be sitting down watching an Andy Griffith or some old show, and he'll climb up on my lap, put his head on my chest. That's Abba. That's what God wants us to do to him. Because we are adopted into his family, we can cry, Abba, Father. No matter how far we get away from God, no matter how much we disobey, we have a special relationship because of Jesus Christ. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. But it goes on one more. It says the Prince of Peace. You know, our fathers give us commands. Elizabeth, when she came home uh, yesterday, they were we were getting up, getting ready to go to Parkersburg, and she read Nehemiah. She was reading a, a Bible story book talking about God's commandments. And she said, you know, uh, she was asking him to read a word. And he read one word. I think he read God's, but he didn't know what commandments was. And she goes, you know what a commandment is? And she told him, says a commandment is when you're told to do something. And, you know, God gives us some commandments in his word because he loves us and protects us. He wants to take care of us. He's given us some things we should do and some things we shouldn't do. He's given us ways how we can protect ourselves. He's given us some ways how we can get closer to him and know a little bit more about him. But when you obey the Father's commandments, that is the only time you're going to know the Prince of Peace. Because when we obey him, 
He will give us a peace that passes all understanding. You may know the person of Jesus Christ as the Prince of Peace because he's your Savior. But God wants it to go further than that. He wants you as you uh, call him Abba Father and you climb up and you just love on God. He wants to give you that peace that passes all understanding. The Bible talks about us keeping our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. For most Christians, they lose the battle, the spiritual battle. They lose it right here in their mind because they don't have the peace that God wants them to have. Christ came to this earth. The angels proclaimed, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. That's what God intended for all mankind. But you must have that relationship with him. We're going to close with this one passage. Turn, if you would, to Ephesians chapter 2. As we think about the Prince of Peace. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. Now remember, I said these names are progressive. It starts out with everyone knowing our wonderful creator. Because every man is going to be without excuse. And then uh, the counselor, he's going to guide and lead us all to himself so that every man can be saved. God's going to force us. He's going to make us make a decision. Do we accept the gospel? Do we reject the gospel? And then we're going to know him as the mighty God. If we reject the gospel, we're only going to know the mighty God as our wrath. And he's going to be fighting against us every day until we get saved. And then if we get saved, he's going to, we're going to know him as the mighty God as our protector. And he's fighting on our behalf. And then as we continue to grow in our relationship to God, we are to be, know him as the everlasting father because we've been adopted into his family. He wants us to just to love on him and, and cherish that relationship with him just like a little child with their father. And then as we continue to obey his commandments, we will know him as the prince of peace. And here's why. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our, what's the next word? Peace. He is our peace. It's not just to know the Prince of Peace is your Savior, but Christ is your peace. That's why you must know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, because the more you know him, the more peace you will have in your heart and life. But let's read on. It says, for he is our peace who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinance. Now, when you see that word enmity, the Bible says that means enemy. There was one last enemy that needed to be destroyed in 1 Corinthians 15. It says that last enemy that needed to be destroyed is death. It's talking about death and destruction, the eternal death, the lake of fire. God has destroyed that enemy so that it no longer has power over us because he is our peace. It goes on here and says, For to make in himself of twain uh, one new man, so making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you who were far off and to them that were not. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. That passage there sums up these, all these names here about how we can come to know our wonderful God. We will, he is wonderful. He is counselor. He is the mighty God. He is the everlasting Father. And lastly, he's the Prince of Peace. Do you know him as your Savior today? Have you had a time when you've accepted Christ? Once and for all. God wants so much more with a relationship with us than we could ever realize. And you know, if we could just love on him, stand by him, let him protect us, let him do all of these wonderful things for us, he will give us that peace that passes all understanding because he is our peace. That's the great God and Savior we celebrate this Christmas season. And it's all because a child is born and a son is given. Thank God for all these things. Let's all stand. We'll have a word of prayer.
Father, we ask you to bless us. I pray, Lord, that you will bless this invitation time now. Help us to make, Lord, decisions for you. I pray that our hearts might be encouraged and might be challenged through this message. But, Lord, there might be some struggling here with their salvation. I pray that if they are, they need to realize that they're a sinner. And, Lord, that's not a good thing. But because of our sin, we deserve your wrath. We deserve to see the mighty God, that part of the mighty God, your wrath upon us. That's what we deserve. We deserve to spend eternity in hell in a lake of fire. But I'm so glad that to us a son is given. And Christ gave himself for us. He died on that old rugged cross and shed his blood to pay for our sins. And we can have a home in heaven if we'll simply ask him to save us. Lord, thank you for the relationship we can have with you. And for those of us who are Christians, Lord, I don't know what, I know Christmas time is a, it's a wonderful time of year for me as I think about uh, all the, the great memories this time of year. But we know sometimes the holidays are not a wonderful time. But Lord, if we're a Christian, Christmas can always be a wonderful time. As we reflect upon our wonderful Savior and who he is and what he means to us. We may have gone through some heartaches in this life. We may have gone through some battles. We may be fighting some right now. But Lord, I'm glad as we're your child that we have the mighty God fighting in our behalf. Lord, we thank you for all of these things. And maybe we'd just like to come and pray and, and say thank you. And Lord, if there's a heavy burden we're carrying, I pray that we'll just lay it at your feet and ask you to carry it. Father, we ask these things and ask you to bless this invitation time. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing a few verses here. 236. 236. If you'd like to follow along as they begin to play and sing, won't you come? Won't you just let the Lord speak to you? If he told you to come, you step out right where you are. God will he'll meet you down here at the altar. and You just lay your burdens there at his feet as we sing. service here in a word of prayer and I appreciate you all being here uh, don't forget uh, pick up your Christmas cards over here uh, and then also leave your chairs if you would where they're at and we can get those uh, starting to set up and for the young people who would like to or are able to uh, because that was kind of a, a last minute thing if they're able to do that and they want to go through their parts real quick uh, we're not going to go through the whole entire play uh, we're just going to go through some stuff here quickly and the scenes real fast um, hopefully it won't take very long, but if they, anyway, if they can meet over here. What? Oh, yes, don't forget about the ornaments up here also, uh, and get those. And if you can get the food in uh, for the ornaments, uh, some people will take the ornaments and keep them, but if you don't want to do that, you can just take the food items and, and bring the food back in. 
Uh, but you can have the food back in here by, uh, what was I, Tuesday, and then I can get that delivered Wednesday. So anyway, let's close the service here, and we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. And I want to ask Mike Cyrus if he'd mind closing the prayer, please. Lord, I'm going to say, you know, thank you for all the Man, God bless you. You're dismissed.